Representative DeBolt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, as we stand here today and we stand before the body as the minority party, we are excited to get to work this year. Uh, we were able to pass uh, and work on a budget in the past two years. We're a minority party that put out solutions in the way of a budget. We brought it to the table and we, we influenced policy. You heard it from the speaker today. We made an unwinnable situation where everybody thought we needed revenue into a situation where we knew we didn't. We're excited to stand here today, though, to solve more problems for Washington State. As I think about it, I think about the challenges ahead of us, and I think about our new governor and what we need to do to support him. One of the things we have to support him in is he said that he didn't want to raise taxes. He said that we didn't need new revenue. We could solve the problem within the revenue we have. And I agree, Mr. Speaker. The thing that we have to do is you talk about the Great Recession we have to think about what is a Great Recession. What is the driver of the Great Recession? Is it we need bigger government? Is that what a Great Recession is about? Or is it about we need jobs, Mr. Speaker? When we talk about the Great Recovery, where do we sit as it's compared to our neighbors in Oregon and Idaho, even California? They're recovering. We have yet to begun. Why is that, Mr. Speaker? Because we are not making the changes necessary to do what? create jobs. This is a problem that we're having. Opportunity gaps. As we talk about the opportunity gaps, Mr. Speaker, what is that opportunity gap? The opportunity gap is about poverty. It's about families that are struggling, that can't make it there through their lives. They're sitting there looking at their checkbook every day, wondering what they're going to sacrifice today because they don't have what, Mr. Speaker? A job. It's not about Seattle jobs. It's about the entire state's jobs. The rural areas of Washington State are dying, Mr. Speaker, because we don't think of them. Whether it's Growth Management Act, that's a cookie cutter government that's been placed upon us that worked for King County, maybe works for Pierce County, but is uh, strangling and killing rural Washington because we can't locate businesses there. If you don't have jobs, you don't have revenue. It's a simple equation. Social economic woes are solved by a job. And yet, Mr. Speaker, we hear that government is the way to create jobs to get out of this problem. We have picked winners and losers in the job market for too long. We have to raise the whole ship. We have to make sure rural Washington has the same opportunities as urban Washington. We need to make sure that every child has an opportunity to an education. We need to make sure that every teacher has a safe environment to work in. How do we do that? How do we make people better environmentalists? Anybody know? When you're a better environmentalist is when you're working. That's when you change, you don't change your own oil and dump it down the drain. That's when you take precautions because you have a job to be able to pay for it to do it right. That's when you can go out and get a new car that creates revenue for the state of Washington. Washingtonians don't feel empowered right now because they're not working. We have 13% unemployment in one of my counties. 13. Is there opportunity there? We can't get permits, Mr. Speaker, that we need to build jobs. Is that government creating jobs? Or is that government hindering jobs? Mr. Speaker, we cannot tax our way out of the problems that we're facing today any time that we think we can make it more expensive on those families of Washington to make decisions on what they're going to buy because they're not sure if they can afford a gallon of gas anymore or if they can afford their property taxes anymore. Anything we do to make it more expensive on them or their companies, their employers, or their lack of employers, we're doing them a disservice. So we're committed to three things in our caucus. Funding education first, making it a priority, giving it its own budget, and making sure the children of Washington know that they're a priority and that the court knows they're a priority. <laughs> We're committed to jobs. More importantly, making personal incomes rise, giving people more disposable income, more opportunities, more chances to send their kids to college, to do better for their families, to be better environmentalists, and be better Washingtonians, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And lastly, the thing that we need to focus on the most is a sustainable budget. 
that focuses on the mental health and public safety of Washingtonians, that we can do this within the parameters that we have set if we make the right choices. We can't, we can't cave to special interests, Mr. Speaker. We have to do what's right. We can't pick winners and losers. We can do this. We've done it before. We're only 900 million down, folks. We did it with 2 billion down last time. This is a cakewalk, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, we've got to work within our means. And I am here to commit to you that anytime you want solutions and suggestions, Gary's at your beck and call. <laughs> and that our caucus promises to you to be open, honest, and transparent. That we will give you everything we have to solve the problems in the state of Washington, no matter who gets the credit. We want to bring our ideas forward, Mr. Speaker, and get us out on time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.